I'm Sarah Joe, your host here in the Diamond Lane on Classic 107 in Winnipeg, and we have just invited a very special guest into the studio. Chase Paget, co-author and star of Six Guitars, being featured at this year's Winnipeg Fringe Festival, not to mention other year's Winnipeg's Fringe Festival, or Winnipeg's Fringe Festival. Did I say that correctly? Sure. Uh, thanks, Chase. He's back, and because people have loved the show so much, six characters, six styles, one guy, mm-hmm. one guitar, mm-hmm. happening at the PTE main stage, well, last week and now this week, it runs until the 30th. Chase, welcome back to Winnipeg. Well, thank you for having me back. I love Winnipeg. Uh, this is my fifth year here. Fifth year? Fifth year. Year, I uh, did six guitars uh, along in 2013, 2015, now 2017. Amazing. And then in 2014 and 16, I did my other show called Nashville Hurricane. Well, so tell us about what it's like being a guy who travels the, well, the continent mm-hmm. doing a, a one man show like this. You know what? It's, uh, I'll be honest with you, if you were to have me right now explain what my life is like to me when I was in high school, uh, my brain would have exploded. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, it's every. This honestly is the life I always wanted in in many ways. It has its downsides, but for the most part, every day is a miracle. <laughs> well, amazing. So, talk. Give us that spiel right. you would give to your your high school self. I'm so curious now. All right, I, I'd be like, all right, Chase. First off, you will kiss a girl. <laughs> you will. It's gonna happen sooner than you might think. You really will. Uh, you're gonna lose 75 pounds in your senior year. Uh, all of that time that you spent not partying and not having friends and just sitting down and playing guitar, it's going to really pay off, buddy. It really is. Later on, you're going to meet some people who are going to change your life, one of them being actually my co-author, Jay Hopkins. He, I met him when I was in high school, believe it or not. In Florida, you were saying earlier. In Florida, yeah. yeah it okay. was under very weird circumstances. So the story how I met Jay, my co-author for Six Guitars, uh, on major holidays, my mom would sometimes take my brother and I to a theme park because it's, you know, in our backyard. Oh, nice. And uh, one day I was uh, walking through Islands of Adventure, and there's a big oh. fountain there that squirts kids with water, and you can talk to it, and it talks back. There's someone talking to you. And it asked what I wanted to be when I grow up. And I said, I want to be an improviser. I'm going to move to Chicago after I graduate high school. I'm going to go to Second City, yes. and I'm going to go do that thing. And he's like, oh, awesome, cool. Don't do that. <laughs> What? Yeah, don't do that. What you need to do is go check out the SAC Comedy Lab. S-A-K dot com. Go check okay. it out. SAC. Okay. I was like, all right. I Googled it, and it's this whole improv theater that I didn't know existed in Orlando at all. And then when I went to college in Orlando, I became a part of that, and it totally changed my life. And then Jay, who was the fountain, was also my level three teacher. And then he was also the guy who said, yeah, I'll, I'll help you out with that project, the the six guitars thing. Yeah, sure, I'll help with that. And it totally changed my life. So now this show premiered in Orlando in 2010. It did. Right? And like, what, what kind of reaction did you get from your audience on first performance? Oh, God. I, I don't know what's more noteworthy, the audience's standing ovation or my complete shock? <laughs> did not see it coming, Sarah. Like... I, I genuinely, it was so surprising to me. They mentioned my surprise in my review. Like, he seemed genuinely surprised yeah. that everyone liked it, but we did five stars. Amazing. It, it was amazing. That, that whole, I was terrified. Two weeks before I premiered that show, I had never done a solo performance of anything. I don't have a theater degree, I have a music degree. Um, but I challenged myself and I was sure, like, well, worst case scenario, I slightly embarrassed myself. But instead, the complete opposite happened. It it really changed my life. And since then, I've been uh, touring around. Uh, It took me a few years to figure out how to make it full-time, but then since 2013, it has been full-time, no question. Amazing. So with the momentum of Six Guitars, uh, then came other shows, right? I mean, or was that beforehand? The Nashville... The Nashville Hurricane, yeah. Yeah. That was my third solo show, believe it or not. I have a solo show that I've never done in Canada called Superman Drinks. And there was very little music in it. There's no characters. It's basically me telling the story of my relationship to my dad and how he bought me my first guitar and how I played Tears in Heaven at his memorial when I was 19. Um, And I feel like I got everything I needed out of that. And I don't feel like I need to go on that journey in in my heart in front of an audience anymore. Uh, Nashville Hurricane came about in 2012 
the first that I that came across like Christopher Walken. <laughs> 2012. <laughs> oh, Nashville. Um, and it was uh, I tried to do a one man musical from rough idea to doing it in front of people in six weeks. Wow. And my procrastination <laughs> showed. <laughs> oh, gosh. So then the next year I rewrote the whole thing. I rewrote a lot of it while I was in Winnipeg for my first year in Six Guitars here, premiered it in Edmonton, came back with it the following summer, and that's just another show that's sort of in the canon. We are in the studio currently uh, with Chase Paget, co-author and star of Six Guitars here in Winnipeg for the third time. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, you've been here before with your other show, and yeah. so this you're familiar with our audiences here. So, oh, it's great. This is uh, I'm so glad. Have uh, you played at PTE before? Is that yeah, where you? Okay, I've, played so it, I've only played at PTE here oh, uh, so. with my solo shows. The Winnipeg. You're right. I'm very familiar with the audiences here. The Winnipeg audiences are really special, and I think uh, the Fringe uh, benefits from it enormously. There's something about the culture in this town that really gets theater and is willing to take a risk Mm -hmm. and support live performance in a way that is, I I would describe it as like civic pride. I would agree with you. Like I live in Portland, and our civic pride uh, is like, we got great craft beer, we got, uh, you know, our brunch is amazing. Yeah, man, I I went to Tin Shed and I Jam. Live, I live th- four blocks from Tin Shed. Oh my gosh, it was so good. I eat there all the time. And we brought um, our, my friend's puppy, Charlie, and he was so good. Oh, all the puppies best. there, they're so cute. Anyway, sorry, continue. <laughs> yeah, but that's like our civic pride is like brunch right. and legal marijuana and uh, <laughs> an amazing coffee. But when you come to Winnipeg, it's like, our civic pride is we will give you $10 to do whatever make-believe you are willing to do for us for an hour. Fantastic. It's awesome. Well, welcome back. Tell us a little bit more about your show, Chase. So sure. For those uh, audience members that haven't yet been able to witness or haven't seen the trailer, uh, give us a quick rundown of what an audience would expect in, in your show. Six guitars. Uh, I call it a pitch-perfect blend of music, comedy, and characters. Mm-hmm. I play six different characters. Each one plays a different genre of music through guitar. Blues, jazz, rock, classical, folk, and country. Each character is based on uh, musicians or people that influenced me uh, in my upbringing as a guitar player. A couple of them are based on um, professors I had in music school, particularly my jazz guy, my classical guy. And they all share stories about what music means to them and songs that are originals and standards of their genres. And a lot of those stories, even the things that are supposedly contradictory, I still believe all of them. They're really just reflections of my own relationship to music, just sort of told with different specifics. For instance, like when I mentioned a moment ago, uh, playing Tears in Heaven at my dad's funeral when I was Mm -hmm. 19, I do a a part of the show where my folk character talks about falling in love with folk music as a way to mourn the loss of his uncle Jerry. And really, that's just the same story. It's just Mm -hmm. told through a different lens. Mm -hmm. Uh, But every time I do that story... Uh, I still think of my dad. I still think of playing for him. And, and I still am filled with gratitude for the one time he bought me a guitar when I totally didn't want it or expect it or ask for it, even remotely. <laughs> That's kind of beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty you, rad. You know, I we talk a lot here on the station, especially I, I talk about uh, composers and their relationships with, with people and their experiences in life and how that kind of shapes what how they speak mm-hmm. in, in their creative way. Now, you uh, you aren't just a musician. You are an actor. You are an improviser. So how did, how did that all come together? How did you finally make that decision to join those, those parts into this really interesting and unique whole? You know what? It was just a personal dare for me. So I, I went to school uh, for music at the mm-hmm. University of Central Florida. While I was doing that, I was taking, that was like weekdays. Week nights, uh, I was performing at the SAC Comedy Lab where Wayne Brady started. That's right, sort of the right. famous yeah. alumni to date. Yeah. Um, and then I was also performing at theme parks, getting a ton of stage time. You learn a valuable lesson about performing in front of middle of the road audiences when you do it seven times a day oh, wow. several days a week for years wow. and you really learn the skill of how to sell the illusion of spontaneity even if you've done a thing thousands of times so all of those skills were uh, a real like beginning stew mm-hmm. right that sounds gross <laughs> it's uh it was a really good antecedent to yeah. challenging myself and then i saw a friend do a solo show 
that I was like, man, that seems that seems like the scariest, hardest thing in the world is just to engage an audience by yourself wrong. for an hour. You have to be either extremely talented or wildly delusional. <laughs> And I decided to find out which one I would be. I don't have an answer yet. Well, maybe it's a beautiful balance of both, Chase. I think it is. You know? <laughs> I think it is. No, you don't live half your year on the road uh, without a little bit of delusion in your mind. In your heart. <laughs> it's just the truth. Chase Paget, co-author and star of Six Guitars, featured at this year's Winnipeg Fringe Festival at the PTE main stage. For more info, you can visit our website, classic107.com. There's links to the Fringe site. There's a trailer you can watch about what you can expect. Uh, just a chameleon of style is sitting before me and talking to you on the air. Uh, you know, I should probably mention... Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Please, Chase. Uh, there's a thing a lot of people show up to that they're surprised with. The show's name is Six Guitars. And mm -hmm. it represents six different guitar players. There's actually only one guitar. And people are like, well, how do you make them sound different? Like, huh. well, with the technology of modern, like, you know, sound computing, it's effortless. The pedal setup you, uh, mm -hmm. you have, it's just like one thing. It's not even like a board. It's, it's just, well, it's just a board. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like it's one a, piece. Yeah, it's a handful what? of foot switches and it sounds amazing. It's a, it's, I couldn't have done the show with six actual guitars. Well, I mean, the again, yes, the beauty of modern technology. Whether you're, are you, are you accompanying yourself as well? Or are you just? I mean, oh yeah. Well, you were. Are are you singing? Or are you just? Oh you're yeah. Speaking, you're singing oh, I, I sing all the time, you're and I everything. sing in all the character voices. Like, uh, for instance, the opening song is, "Howling down to the crossroads, trying to flag a ride." Oh, 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 oh. Howling down to the cross. Balls, trying to flag it right. That's just my old blues character, right? And then there's um, uh, other songs. Uh, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy. It all these different character voices. I don't have any technology for that. That's just all voice. That's, that's all you. Yeah. That's all you. Well, I mean, your walk-in impression was pretty impressive, I was just saying. <laughs> the, uh, thank you. <laughs> it, used, it used to be a comic crutch. I've actually not pulled it out in a long time. Well, uh, we are welcome. Or it is welcome here in the studio. Chase, thank you so much for joining us. Friends, go and check it out. Six Guitars at the PTE main stage featuring none other than Chase Paget and his six magical characters that he pulls from the ether. Get your tickets early. Tonight's probably all those pre-sales are gone for tonight. Oh, uh, the ones this weekend are probably going to be gone pretty soon, too. It only runs through the 30th, so go check it out. Classic107.com for more info. Chase, thank you so much for joining us. Thank Come back you anytime. for me. <laughs> Such a pleasure. Friends, we are going to go to a short break here in the mm -hmm. Diamond Lane, and we will come back yes. with more great music. Great, great. Timeless. Timeline. Fantastic. <laughs> Breathtaking music. Classical. Sh 107. Winnipeg. Chase Paget.